Today is our second day. We'll be talking about a lot of different and interesting things. We'll be talking about the e-commerce and the digital economy. We'll be talking about the collaboration in the e-commerce logistics sector. And also, since we are here in the ASEAN region and here in Thailand, I think it is also very important to talk about the Mekong region and the digital aspects of it and also the logistics aspects of it and how we can improve it more. So first off, I would like to invite Ms. Cecile Barrere, Chief Digital Economy Capacity Building Section, E-Commerce and Digital Economy Branch of UNCTAD, joining us via online. I think her signal is just about ready. Hello, Ms. Cecile. Okay, so welcome. I'll, uh, I'll pass it on to you then, Ms. Cecile, please. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, uh, I'm very honored, of course, to take part in this uh, uh, Thailand uh, Trade Logistics Symposium 2022 on the theme of e-commerce and cross-border uh, logistics. Uh, what I would like to do today is to share with you as an introduction um, to this session is an overview of the trends uh, and opportunities and challenges uh, in the context of the digital transformation. So I will share my presentation in a minute. Um, and this presentation will include also some information about uh, the ASEAN um, as it is a focus. Can you see the presentation now? I believe so. So um, I will share some findings about uh, Antad's research, basically. Uh, and uh, uh, first, I think it's important to have a common definition. Uh, sorry, I cannot move my slides now. Okay. Um, so first, I, I think it's it's uh, useful to have a conceptual clarity about terminology. Uh, when we talk about digital, there's uh, many words that means different things. So in this slide, um, we would like to to, to show you um, what, what uh, we intend by digiti digitization, for instance, which is more about process, how we automi automize uh, paper, um, uh, how we, we, we um, sorry, oops, how we um, mean, what do you mean by that is, is to, yeah, the autom automatization of processes. Uh, when we talk about digitalization, it's more a strategy or process that goes beyond the implementation of uh, the technology, uh, and that involves, um, you know, a change in uh, in um, technology and uh, and uh, imply a deeper adaptation. Uh, that's for the entire business line and business model. When we talk about digital transformation, it is more about people than technology, and it requires a much broader adoption of technology and cultural. And you know, we we um, we see in many countries that uh, uh, there's a trend, especially after COVID-19, to embrace technology and to um, do more e-commerce, for for example. Um, then for e-commerce, what we use uh, as a definition is a definition of the OECD, uh, which is the sale of purchase of goods and services conducted over computer networks. Um, and whether the payment or delivery is done online, um, that is not included. Um, and it's it's automated process, basically, when you order something online. So it's important, I think, to uh, have these definitions in mind when uh, we talk about digital in general. And um, I'm not sure that, uh, you know, all, all countries are using this e-commerce definition uh, of e-commerce, but that's what we use at Tentad. Now, uh, I would like to... Um, mention the recent data that we have been able to gather. Uh, this is to show you that uh, there was a si significant uptick, of course, of uh, in consumer e-commerce activities. Uh, I'm sure you're all aware about that. Um, and in pandemic, and uh, this was sustained into 2021 with online sales increasing markedly in value despite easing restrictions in many countries. And this trend is likely to have long lasting effects. Um, and that is important in terms of logistics because logistics is, is, is an important part of the trade uh, supply chain. 
uh, and there was a lot of, of increase in, in parcels. So um, this this is indeed uh, some a challenge for the logistic industry. Now, if we look at the online sales as a share of total sales between 2019 and 2020, uh, there was a five percent increase, and uh, you know, uh, beyond uh, the, uh, the, the increase in e-commerce uh, sales, uh, what we see is with the COVID, uh, we are all relying increasingly on, on uh, digital. Um, and we have been, um, you know, uh, looking at also data flows because that's important in that context. Um, and um, also, you know, digital transformation affects all SDGs. So that is important that countries, we see countries embracing more and more uh, digital transformation. However, we see also some, uh, uh, some challenges with some countries lagging behind. And in the ASEAN, that is of course the um, LDCs, although they have made progress and we will see that later. Um, now, if we look at uh, the online retail sales, uh, particularly, you know, they were particularly boosted during the pandemic. Uh, and according to uh, UNCTAD research in this area, what we have seen is the average share of internet users who made purchases online across 66 countries with statistics available um, increased from 53% to 60% following the onset of the pandemic. At the same time, um, company financial reports show that the shift toward, towards online shopping has further entrenched a strong market concentration of online retail and marketplaces. Um, and what we see in this slide is uh, the statistics for seven countries, including uh, Singapore in the, in the ASEAN. Um, and um, what we see is that online retail sales increased substantially in these countries from around 2 trillion in 2019, uh, immediately prior to the pandemic, around 2.5 trillion in 2020, uh, and 2.9 trillion in 2021. China accounts for over half of the online retail sales across these countries, and the United States for about 30%. What, what is important here is that uh, what we see is the trend accelerated by in many of these countries, especially those uh, where relative low share of retail sales take place online. For instance, in Singapore, online retail sales in 2021 were approaching triple of uh, the 2019 uh, level. Uh, what we see also is Canada and Australia uh, experiencing also large increases over the same period. Now, if we're looking across all these countries, um, uh, we see uh, that uh, most countries have, uh, you see here developing and developed countries in this, uh, in this uh, slide. Um, and uh, what we see is that uh, the online sales increase, increase in, in market value despite the easing of restriction in many countries. The average share of the internet users who make purchases online increased uh, from 53% before the pandemic to 60 following the onset of the pandemic across the 66 countries with statistics. But as I said earlier, the situation prior to the pandemic uh, and the extent of the boost of e-commerce um, experience vary between countries. Many developed countries already had relatively high levels of online shopping, above 50% of internet users, uh, while most developing countries had a lower uptake of e-commerce. So um, the greatest rise in e-commerce um, occurred in several developing countries. In the United Arab Emirates, the share of internet users who shopped online and more double, um, and from so, sorry, double from 27% in 2019 to 63% in 2020. In Bahrain, also the share triple, reaching 45% in 2020, and in Uzbekistan it rose from 4% to 11%. So there's clearly a trend where e-commerce is increasing. Uh, in Thailand, um, which already had relatively high uh, uptake prior to the pandemic, a 
16% point increase meant that for the first time, more than half of the internet users shopped online in 2020. And among developed countries, the greatest increase were Greece, uh, Ireland, Hungary, and Romania. Of the 66 countries covered, uh, shopping remained the lowest in El Salvador, uh, with 1% of internet users, Azerbaijan with 5% and Uzbekistan 11% and Colombia 17%. So one reason for such differences is in that countries differ greatly in the extent of digitalization and therefore in their ability to turn swiftly to digital technologies to mitigate uh, economic disruption. Uh, least developed countries are especially in need, of course, of support to take e-commerce, um, but are not represented in this analysis due to the lack of data on internet uh, usage. And that is also um, an issue for, for, for us collectively to measure e-commerce because many countries do not have um, statistics in place. So these statistics only provide, of course, a partial uh, perspective on the evolution during the pandemic. Uh, then if we move to uh, the e-commerce uh, uh, in the ASEAN, what we see is uh, um, that e-commerce is also increasing a lot. Uh, you have on this slide uh, the percentage of internet users who have made at least one purchase uh, online in the past year. Uh, we don't have statistics uh, as I was mentioning for Cambodia, Laos and Myanmar. Uh, but what we see is in the other countries as a uh, uh, high in e-commerce uh, adoption. So now if we look at the biggest online platforms uh, which benefited during the pandemic, <clears throat> what you see in this slide is uh, the top uh, 13 consumer-focused e-commerce businesses, uh, which increased their revenue sharply during the pandemic. In 2019, these companies made sales worth uh, 2.5 trillion. And following the pandemic, this rose sharply to 2.9 trillion. Uh, a further one-third increase followed in 2021, taking sales to 3.9 trillion. The shift towards online shopping has further entrenched the already strong market concentration of online retail and marketplace businesses. Uh, as you can see, Alibaba, Amazon, GD.com, and Pindudo increased their revenue by 70% 70, 70 uh, between 2019 and 2021, and their share of total value through all these certain platforms rose from around 75% in 2018 and 2019 to over 80% in 2020 and 2021. Uh, what we see is also Expedia, uh, Booking Holdings, and Airbnb, so gross booking decline by up to two-thirds in 2020 as movement control reduced, of course, uh, the demand for travel and accommodation services through gross return in 2021 as restrictions were, were eased. So um, this means a lot, of course, in terms of logistics, in terms of uh, increase of uh, little parcels, for instance. Now, if we look at uh, the ASEAN specifically, UNCTAD has been helping the region since uh, the early days, in fact, um, and the region has embraced uh, digitalization since 2000. Uh, so here I've just listed a few uh, the main plans, uh, framework agreements uh, that the ASEAN uh, has done, pioneering again this work uh, in, in, develop in the developing world. Um, and I would like to zoom in on the uh, agreement on e-commerce uh, and on the ASEP, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, which contains a chapter on e-commerce. Um, the recent, uh, the recent uh, strategies uh, are, you know, the Digital Master Plan 2025 and the ASEAN Digital Economy Framework Agreement. So, um, on the, on the uh, ASEP, um, which only concerns the, uh, the LDCs in the region. Uh, we have some in the, in the agreement uh, on e-commerce, uh, three work streams uh, cross with cross-border focus, uh, with business focus and consumer focus. 
Uh, in terms of cross-border focus, of course, the logistics is one important part, as well as paperless trading. And I know many of the countries are working with our um, our sister agency, UNSCAP, on paperless trade. Um, there's some aspects also on uh, cross-border trade revenue, on transfer of information, uh, data flows, and and data localization. On the business focus, um, we have to make sure that electronic transactions are in place, um, as well as electronic uh, signature authentication, payment, and also um, some other legal aspects that are important for uh, e-commerce, uh, that is intellectual property and um, competition as well. Uh, as we saw, um, the, with the big platforms, there's a huge a difference between those who wants to go who want to go online and those big platforms so um, uh, the question of competition is important on the consumer focus um, again uh, this is to build trust a consumer uh, needs to be uh, to, to know that they are protected especially when we talk about uh, domestic but also cross-border uh, what we see uh, at UNCTAD we are tracking uh, e-commerce legislation in, in four areas, so in transaction, cybercrime, data protection, uh, consumer protection. Um, and we see that uh, there's a gap in between low adoption in developing countries and uh, developed countries. And also beyond the adoption of, of law is a matter of implementing those laws. And in many uh, countries, there's no not even uh, agencies that are uh, up and running in these areas of consumer protection, uh, data protection, and cybercrime. Um, online dispute resolution uh, are also uh, nascent in many countries. So clearly, there's a need to uh, implement a plan. And um, on the cross-border focus, um, there, there's some uh, milestones that have been attached to the e-commerce plan. And in terms of trade facilitation and e-commerce logistics, uh, what uh, has been said is that uh, the ASEAN will have identified and quantified key obstacles to efficient e-commerce logistics across the region, and will have commenced impactful collaborative initiative involving customer agencies, postal agencies, and private sector stakeholders. <clears throat> and what we see in our research when we do, uh, for instance, e-trade readiness assessments, which are there to uh, ensure um, that we understand the preparedness of countries in e-commerce. We have a specific uh, um, uh, section on logistics. And what we see is that postal agencies are sometimes uh, weak, not adapted, and there's no link, link between customs and, um, and, and the post as well. Um, on the paperless trading, um, this is the ASEAN single windows, and again, um, this will contribute to facilitate uh, the ease of businesses. Um, on custom duties, um, again, uh, they, there's a need for information sharing mechanism uh, on digital trade revenue uh, and ensure alignment with commitments in other fora. So in cross-border transfer of information, uh, all member states uh, are uh, bound to um, an impede cross-border flow of data uh, used for business purposes. Um, and for instance, um, the ASEAN cross-border data flow mechanism that has been uh, put in place. On data localization, um, the member states should fully comply with the commitment not to use data localization uh, for business operation. So this is a quite ambitious plan uh, and uh, and UNCTAD uh, and other agencies like UNSCAP are here to support this uh, this work. What, what we have seen in the region uh, when assessing e-trade readiness for policy making in the ASEAN uh, is uh, that not all countries are you know, acting at the same pace uh, and speed because they are not so much ready in some areas, whether it is the internet access and use or the, uh, the broadband speed uh, and cost. Um, in terms of logistics, it's, it's the same, but we'll go into details with some examples of countries in the region. 
and then also um, business skills uh, are not always um, up to standard to um, for entrepreneurs to go online. Uh, digital payments are also can be an issue. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the legal and regulatory frameworks are not always um, up to date or inexistent or difficult, are not put in place uh, simply as that. And um, sometimes there's no, <clears throat> sorry, there's no e-government, um, e-commerce government strategies. Uh, not all countries have that also in place. And as I said, the lack of statistics it is preventing also policy making, as we don't know what is happening domestically and cross border. So if we look at digital connectivity in, in the ASEAN, um, what we see is uh, many countries have a high level of uh, connectivity, internet users, but again, uh, not all of them, especially in Laos, uh, Myanmar and, and um, yes. So th there was an increase in some countries in recent years, especially in Cambodia. Uh, so we, we have uh, good connectivity in many countries, but as we say, it needs also the people to adopt e-commerce um, to be um, able to uh, maximize the benefits of e-commerce. So what we have done at Angtad, looking at, uh, in general, not only on the ASEAN, but on, on the uh, challenges that uh, countries face, in several areas, including the ICT connectivity. Uh, what we recommend to improve uh, the, uh, the ICT uh, connectivity uh, is to definitely open, have open and transparent telecom markets to attract domestic and foreign investment. Uh, in terms of infrastructure sharing, uh, we need effective spectrum management and reduce taxes and duties on ICT equipment and services. Uh, in terms of education, skills and awareness, uh, the uh, courses at, uh, you know, at all levels of the education, not only uh, universities, but we need to integrate uh, ICT at all levels. Um, we, there's a need also to reform teaching method to promote complementary non-connected cognitive skills, and we need also to support uh, the uh, worker and teacher retraining and skills upgrading. Um, there's also a need to conduct awareness campaigns on opportunities and risk of uh, digital trade. This is uh, something very important as we see uh, in most of the countries. In terms of trade facilitation and logistics, um, as I was saying, and I'm sure you all know that, uh, due to the large number of small parcels, there's a need to adapt. Uh, and most of the time, you know, posts are not uh, equipped for that. And there's other players in the private sector that could play a role as well. Um, in that context, also, it's important to implement the WTO trade facilitation agreement and modernize stream and streamline custom processes and single windows. So that, that's part of the plan also in, in the ASEAN. Um, also, what we see as important is to simplify export processes for shipments and low physical weight and, and value. Um, then with regard to support to MSMSCs, which are the bulk of uh, e-commerce uh, um, in, in developing countries, we need to boost the ICT use among smaller firms uh, for them to participate in international uh, trade. Um, there's a need also for more capacity building activities, again, to build skills for e-commerce and digital delivery. Um, there's a need also to adapt trade promotion uh, by leveraging online platforms and online marketing channels and support businesses in various standards applicable in target markets. Um, we have also looked at gender dimension uh, and people in vulnerable situations. And there again, there's a need to establish networks for women entrepreneurs in digital economy to influence policy developments. Uh, we have attempted a program called E-Trade for Women that uh, uh, indeed uh, strive to um, upgrade the capacity of some women entrepreneurs 
uh, already present in digital field, but they need to just step up. And we have a network of uh, uh, advocates that help them to uh, build capacity uh, in that respect and a community of women as well to make sure that uh, we uh, train as many women as possible. Um, then, um, as I say, the, there's a need to improve the regulatory frameworks. This is key to build trust in e-commerce and we need also to improve on statistics, as I mentioned earlier. So um, we have seen during the COVID an increase in cybercrime. So that's where 79% um, of countries have legislation worldwide. Um, and again, it's not sufficient to have a cyber uh, law, um, cyber crime law. It needs, uh, it needs uh, international cooperation. Sorry. So um, in terms of uh, uh, the main bottlenecks, I wanted to um, brief you on, on our research in the e-trade readiness assessment. If we look at uh, the main bottlenecks in Laos, um, the, the study was conducted in 2018, but we have been since then conducting other study, about 32 now available for countries, mostly in LDCs, 24 in LDCs and the rest in developing countries. And uh, this graph show you um, uh, on uh, Myanmar and, and Laos, uh, what are the main challenges that country face uh, with regard to e-commerce development. So as you see, um, the tra trade logistics is quite high in, in, the, uh, in the graph, uh, but also we have the coordination among institutions E-commerce is a cross-cutting issue, so it needs to um, involve not only the Ministry of Trade, but uh, all kind of ministry, finance, um, Ministry of ICT, uh, and so on and so forth. And all these ministries um, do not have a common strategy or do not have any strategy with regard to e-commerce. So it's important to foster the dialogue among different uh, ministries that are key to e-commerce development. So I was, as I was saying, effective trade, logistic and cross-border is also something important to take into account um, for, for the development of e-commerce. And you can see that in both Myanmar and Laos, this account for um, quite a high um, score in this graph. Uh, what we see also, and that is uh, not only for Laos and uh, Myanmar, is to have really a high, um, level political support, a will from the government to develop this, um, this um, e-commerce. Um, of course, uh, looking at also the risk of e-commerce in terms of competition of SMEs and, and, and uh, uh, but it's important to have a vision on what can be done to support um, the, the sector. Um, again, on the legal framework, skills, infrastructure, of course, infrastructure is the key the first, um, the first to to need it for e-commerce development. If you don't have infrastructure, then you cannot uh, do e-commerce. And what we see is a huge digital divide between see, the main cities and and the rural areas. Um, you see also the understanding of e-commerce, which is quite high. Um, I think uh, that's what we um, we say earlier about you know consumers being ready. Uh, and that is an important factor in many countries. Um, uh, the consumers prefer still to look at the product, to feel it um, before you know they they buy it online. So that is also a constraint for e-commerce development. In terms of payments methods for e-commerce, in most developing countries, uh, the um, the uh, payment is cash on delivery. Uh, but in many others now, uh, there's an increase in digital payment. Um, consumer being able to use credit cards or PayPal or other means to buy their, their purchase online. <clears throat> if we look specifically on trade logistic factors um, in, uh, in Laos, um, what, uh, what score the, the highest is the uh, low shipping costs. Um, so countries feeling that it is too expensive um, 
then the efficient coordination between trade support institutions, clear information about VAT and other taxes applicable. Um, of course, the addressing system is also an issue in many countries where uh, such uh, physical addresses do not exist. Uh, there's uh, many systems now, um, GPS, uh, for instance, led that allow for a uh, digital uh, addressing system. Um, and, and then the rest of the concerns uh, where the risk of online fraud, uh, the availability of payment metho method, um, the full electronic tracking of all shipments, which is not always in place, and uh, the de minimis custom regime also, which um, in many countries varies from, you know, um, little amounts to bigger amounts, and that does not lead to an increase in e-commerce. And also on the single window um, the part, um, this is something that is will facilitate a lot uh, e-commerce. Now, if we look at the factor of preventing investment uh, by private firms in e-commerce solutions, uh, still in Lao, uh, what we see is again the lack of a dedicated logistic solution for e-commerce uh, is again uh, first, with nearly 72%. Um, of um, of uh, people uh, thinking it's uh, it's a factor that prevents uh, e-commerce development, <clears throat> the lack of uh, payment and cashless solutions as well, um, as well as the lack of finance to develop online services, and uh, the unsupportive legal and regulatory framework for e-commerce, the lack of skills and the lack of ICT infrastructure. So um, we can see that uh, here are the commonly, uh, for many countries, obstacles to the development of e-commerce. And this is just Lao, but it applies to many others. So <clears throat> um, Angtad has been doing this e-trade readiness assessment for uh, quite a while now, since 2017. And the first uh, uh, assessment actually was uh, Cambodia, uh, and then in the region we have conducted also the assessment of Laos and Myanmar. Um, in the when we map uh, at Antad, we map also the e-commerce strategies available uh, in the world, and in the ASEAN uh, that's what we have on record. Uh, Cambodia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar. We at Antad conducted this strategy. Uh, the Philippines, Thailand, Singapore, and Vietnam. I, I hope it's complete, uh, and uh, um, if not, I'd be happy to um, update this. Um, and what we see is that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's one thing to develop domestic e-commerce, uh, but it's also a challenge for many of those countries to provide strategic guidance uh, to promote cross-border e-commerce, in particular to regulate it. So again, we come back to the legal framework uh, which is a key to foster e-commerce development cross-border. In terms of logistics, um, what we have done after conducting the e-trade readiness assessment is to look at how countries have been able to implement the recommendations that are contained in those assessments. Uh, and we have developed a, um, a specific program, implementation support mechanism, um, and uh, I would like to zoom in on uh, the logistics uh, part, uh, since it's a theme of that uh, um, seminar. Um, in Cambodia, Cambodia has made a lot of progress since uh, the ET Ready. They have adopted the strategies, they have worked on regulations, on the payment aspects, on, on also the online, online pla platform to allow SMEs to sell uh, products online, uh, including cross-border. And in terms of logistics, the Cambodia Post and the Ministry of Commerce um, are collaborating with UPU and UNCTAD uh, to interface the UPU's custom declaration system uh, with a SICUDA uh, system to improve the processing speed of cross-border e-commerce. Um, also, the Global Alliance for Trade Facilitation um, in partnership with uh, Swiss Contact and Cambodia Ministry of Commerce, uh, have uh, implemented are implementing a project uh, to improve small package trade for SMEs, and this is expected, of course, to contribute to improving uh, pre 
arrival processing in Cambodia to reduce time and cost for express shipment. In terms of um, uh, Laos, um, in, in, in Laos, sorry, um, there was an effort to regulate the uh, e-commerce market. Uh, and an e-commerce decree uh, entered into force last June, uh, la June 2021. Uh, it contains licensing provision for e-commerce businesses. And in Myanmar, there was a public-private partnership to upgrade logistic services and infrastructure. Um, the first multi-user warehouse was opened in November 2019 uh, with the support of DHL. And Regarding custom clearance procedures, uh, they were updated for um, accommodating the import of small uh, express parcel with a $50 uh, dollar, uh, de minimis value. So we can see that countries in the region are, are taking strand to improve the e-commerce ecosystem, uh, especially with regard to the logistic part. Uh, and then um, I just wanted to conclude on this slide. Um, this shows the 34 partners that are working with UNTAD to improve, um, you know, based on their mandates, um, the ecosystem. So um, you have, of course, WCO and UPU, uh, you have regional commissions, you have uh, private sector um, or NGOs, companies like uh, Consumer International, uh, mostly UN organization and uh, affiliated. Uh, and those are at your disposal um, to, you know, contact, of course, if you need to um, improve on various aspects of e-commerce. Again, uh, e-commerce is, uh, is uh, a complex uh, area. It's, it's just a trade conducted online, though. Uh, so the, the difficulties faced by the logistics, for instance, in, in trade, um, whether it is online or offline, are the same. And, um, you know, it... It, uh, it includes uh, not only uh, the postal system, but also the road uh, infrastructure and so on. So with that, I thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Cecile Barrere. Thank you again for joining us today. And uh, this is our questions and comments section. So we'll give about five minutes to the questions. So for those of you joining us in the webinar and for those of you joining us here, if you have any questions, you can direct them to our staff members and then they'll direct them to me and I will uh, ask Ms. Cecile. So first off, uh, questions from our, our audience, Ms. Cecile. You've talked about the uh, challenges in the ASEAN region already. You talked about by 2025, uh, ASEAN would pretty much know what the challenges are. Uh, however, the audience's question is that what are the greatest challenges in ASEAN and how to overcome them to accelerate e-commerce? Yes, thank you very much for that question. It's a quite difficult question because as we know, um, India at the end is a different uh, kind of countries. So you cannot compare Singapore and uh, Laos, for instance. So mm -hmm. difficulties, I would say, would be to um, make sure that those countries which are lagging behind uh, could take part of this ASEAN uh, market. Um, and that, that would be the only one. And, and then again, the difficulties faced by those countries are immense, uh, starting from the uh, wish, will of you know, governments to embark uh, on e-commerce uh, to work together. Uh, most of the time they work in silos. This is not proper to LDCs, but to all of us, <laughs> we're all working in silos. So the priority will be to make sure that those countries uh, reach the same level in terms of connectivity, uh, cultural change, uh, embracing for SMEs the uh, culture of online, um, providing means for them to be online, visible online. So there's a, I think I mentioned all the challenges, but for me, the most important will be to assist those who are lagging behind uh, to reach, you know, the same level of development. Mm -hmm. Especially the uh, infrastructure and try to familiarizing themselves with what e-commerce is, because like you said, e-commerce is basically just trade, but online. Um, yes. Another question from the audience, uh, what strategic guidance 
would you say that you would suggest to the region in order to promote e-commerce? Well, strategic guidance, I think, you know, all the plans that I've mentioned from the ASEAN are stating, you know, the objectives of the region. So uh, they, the, the idea is to foster cross-border in the 10 paradise countries uh, since 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then, of course, uh, it would mean to uh, be able to export uh, beyond the, the region. Uh, and again, there are many challenges, but in the region, there's a lot of uh, support and we can see the dynamism of uh, the ASEAN in all the plans and visions. Uh, so most important is to be able to implement uh, those, um, you know, um, those guidelines and, and ensure mm -hmm. that uh, uh, consumers, businesses uh, are protected. Uh, trust, e-commerce, and, and again, as you say, infrastructure is a, is a big, uh, it's a first I mean, step to do e-commerce is to be able to uh, reach uh, and get online. So that would be uh, uh, the strategic uh, way um, and collaborating also uh, mm -hmm. across governments. Mm -hmm. um, another question, I think this one's a very important one. They're talking about uh, cyber crime and cyber security. Uh, any recommendations or is there any new technology that uh, would make our clients in the region and possibly globally more secure in using e-commerce? Yeah, that's a very important question and I wish I had, <laughs> had the answer <laughs> to that the solution. No, unfortunately, I mean, there's no mm -hmm. technology. Uh, cyber hackers are always ahead of technology. Um, so, you know, um, I, I think, you know, there's two things here. Consumers need to be aware of what they should not be doing, uh, you know, when it comes to, um, to uh, giving con credit card details or um, being suspicious when, you know, you are contacted outside a platform. So there's a, a need for educating the consumers on what uh, to do and, and not to do. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the government policies, I think it's very important to have uh, computer response teams that will, uh, you know, act uh, upon um, a cyber crime and also to foster cooperation among the, the, the different com computer emergency uh, teams. Um, what, what we recommend normally uh, at UNCTAD is to adopt the uh, Budapest Convention. Mm -hmm. um, which is the only uh, instrument also for design for um, developed economies, but there's a few countries that have already uh, joined this convention, and this is the only one for now available. So there's instrument at the international level, cooperation at the regional level, uh, and making sure that uh, you know those response teams can can do things also you know uh, consumer protection agencies should be strengthened to be able to help individual consumers okay. so there's a whole range of uh, measures but again um, we are not uh, we cannot say one day we will be 100 uh, percent protected for sure okay so best to use reliable uh, e-commerce websites and sources then another question about uh, logistics in your view on the china laos high-speed railway, uh, what are the challenges and concern for the China-Lao high-speed railway? This is talking about logistics now. Well, there's many challenges again in logistics. Uh, I'm not too sure about this uh, China railway, but uh, um, you know, all countries we have looked at are clearly um, in deficit of uh, infrastructure, so physical infrastructure and also um, the delivery with no addressing system. So I'm um, not sure I can respond totally to that question, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, maybe maybe somebody else in the room can also chip in uh, or panelists. Okay. Um, I think that pretty much wraps up our questions. Yes, from the audience members. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. C. Alvarez, Chief Digital Economy Capacity Building Section of the E-Commerce and Digital Economy Branch, UNCTAD. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.